Hi there. In this tutorial, we're going to learn the basics of creating a WordPress plugin. Now, instead of starting with a typical Hello World example, I want to show you something a little bit more interesting. In this introductory tutorial, we're going to create a plugin and in the process, we'll demonstrate concepts such as creating administration pages, using the WordPress styles to create your own admin styling, and interacting with the WordPress database using the WPDB object. So let's jump straight into it. So the first thing we'll do is we're going to create a folder on our computer with our plugin name and this will be called My First Plugin. The recommended convention when creating a WordPress plugin is that you should put your plugin file or files inside its own folder and this folder name should generally be the same name as the main plugin file. So let's click inside our folder. Now inside this folder we've created a file which is called myfirstplugin.php and let's open this with our favorite coding editor. So inside this file you can see that we have some PHP tags and inside of these tags we've got what's known as the plugin header. Now this is a very important piece of code because it's the plugin header which enables WordPress to recognize your plugin. Now regarding the plugin header, you should always try to be as descriptive and accurate as possible because what you put inside of this section is the information which will be displayed in the plugins page. So as a first demonstration, let's transfer over our folder with this file inside of it to our WordPress host and we'll put this in the plugins directory. Using our FTP editor, we're going to transfer over our plugin folder to the plugins directory of our WordPress host. So my plugin folder was transferred successfully and now I've logged into my WordPress administration panel and I've gone to the plugins menu. Now on this page you can see that our plugin has actually been recognized by WordPress. Now we can activate this plugin so we'll go ahead and do that now. So now you can see our plugin has been not only recognized, but we've been able to activate it. And also you can see to the right there, the information which was in the header being displayed on the plugins page. So now we're ready to start building some functionality to our plugin. So let's go back to our coding editor. Okay, so now we're back at our code editor and we're going to start to add some functionality to our plugin. Now, since our plugin will only contain a single menu item and page, we'll create a menu under the WordPress's existing settings menu. And to do that, we'll put in the following piece of code. Now, you'll notice in this piece of code that we are using the admin menu hook to add our submenu. We also have a function which we've written which contains the code required to add the submenu. Now let's look at the add options page function and this will add a submenu to the settings menu and as you can see it takes five arguments and they are as follows. The first argument is the title of the page which will be shown in the HTML title tags. The second argument is the name of our submenu as it will be displayed in the dashboard. Um, the third argument is the capability, uh, and this basically controls who can view this submenu. Now we've set ours to manage underscore options, and this basically means that administrators can view the page only. The fourth argument is the menu slug. We're using a thing called a PHP magic constant. Now this constant gives the full path of the file name and the name of our plugin file. The fifth argument is the function which will display our menu page. Okay, so why don't we now transfer over this newly added functionality back to our WordPress host just to see the effect that this has had. So I'm back at my WordPress administration panel and I've, tra I've FTP'd over the latest changes of the file we just made. So we're going to now look at our settings menu. So I'll just go to the settings menu and we can see that our plugin is now appearing in the settings menu there called My First Plugin. 
So let's click on that. And we have a blank page, which is understandable because we haven't added anything to our function, which will uh, govern what the content will be on this page. We're going in the right direction. So let's go back to our code editor. So you'll notice now that we've added in some HTML code to our file. And this just simply consists of an H4 heading. And this is wrapped in between some div tags. And these div tags actually refer to a class called wrap. Now this is an important class. This is WordPress's own class which governs the styling of our menu page. And this uh, particular class will keep our menu page consistent with the general styling of the WordPress administration pages. Another important thing to note is that our HTML code is separated from our PHP code in that it lies outside of the PHP tags. And this is a technique which you quite often have to use when, whenever you need to add HTML code amongst your PHP code. So let's make our page a little bit more interesting and let's add a table which will also be consistent with the WordPress uh, styling of tables which appear in the um, administration pages. So to create the table we've used the following HTML code and you can see here that we've, we've referred to a CSS class called WideFat. Now tables can easily be styled in WordPress using this WideFat class and basically the WideFat class has specific styles set for the T-head and T-foot HTML tags. Now basically this styles the header and the footer of your table to match all other tables in the administration dashboard of WordPress. So why don't we save our file and FTP this back to our WordPress host to see the effect that these changes have had on our plugin. Okay, so we're back at our WordPress administration page and um, we've FTP'd our file back to our WordPress host with the new changes. So let's now go to our settings menu and we'll choose our plugin menu. And as we can see, our table is starting to take shape. We have our H4 heading there and the header and the footer of our table. Let's, um, let's press on and go back to our code editor. Okay, so now we're back at our code editor and what we want to do now is let's add some content to our table and that basically means we want to add something in between the T body tags, the ones you can see right here. So to do that we're going to learn the concept of how to query the WordPress database to get some information and we'll be using this information to insert into our table. So the information which we're going to get from the WordPress database is we're going to query the WordPress posts and we're going to get the all the posts which are in draft status. We're going to uh, display the post title with the post ID. We've now added some more PHP code which does the querying of the WordPress database. Note that we're using a special WordPress class called WPDB which is designed specifically for WordPress database interactions. Now in order to use this class we need to declare it as a global within our function as we've done here. Now these lines of code demonstrate how we're using the WordPress uh, WPDB class. We are calling the getResults method of the class to query the database. As you can see here from the argument we have actually constructed a MySQL command or statement which will get the ID and post titles of all the draft posts in the database. The return results will be in the form of an array and these will be stored in the variable called MyTestDrafts. Okay, so we've queried the database for all the draft posts and now we want to display the title and the ID of the draft posts in our table. So to do that we need to add some more code to extract the data from our variable which is called MyTestDrafts. So we'll add that code now. Now we've added some more code which will output the content of our array which contains the results from our database queries into our administration table. So to do this we have used a loop in the form of a for each statement. You can see here that to create our table rows we are wrapping our results inside HTML TR tags. 
To populate the table cells of each row, we're using some echo statements, which consists of TD tags, which wrap around the post title and post ID values, which we are extracting from the DB object via these commands. Note once again how we're separating some of our HTML and PHP code. So we're now just about done with our coding, so let's see the end result and FTP this file back to our WordPress host. So we've FTP'd our changes back to our WordPress host, and we're now back at our administration panel. So the last time we left this page, we simply had a table with a header and footer and no content inside of it. So let's refresh this page and see what we get. And after refreshing the page, we can see that we have some table contents, which consist of all of the posts which are in draft mode, and we have, we're displaying the post title and the post ID of each of these posts. So this concludes this introductory tutorial about how to create a WordPress plugin. I hope that you found it useful. Bye for now.